It is going to be a busy week for CEOs uh, and managing directors of auto companies as they line up here in the capital for the Mobility Summit, the ACMA, as well as the SIAM conference. Joining us now, an exclusive is Mr. Pavan Goenka. Mr. Goenka, appreciate you joining us here on CNBC TV 18. There's a whole host of issues to talk to you about, sir. But let me start first with what we've seen in terms of the tractor numbers, which is causing a slight bit of concern because for the month of August, uh, we've seen tractor growth slow down to about single digits, 7% year on year versus 20% growth that we saw for the month of July. Is this a one-off on account of the floods that we saw in the Northeast, in Himachal, in Kerala, uh, which accounts for about 10 to 15 percent of, of your volume or is is there something that's changed in the market no I don't think that there is a cost for worry uh, in fact we had said that even in the beginning of the quarter that this quarter this year the the month of July August and September would be slower than last year and the reason is the last year the festive season was almost a month earlier than it is this year and 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 tractor sales have a very high peak uh, in the in uh, after Navratra before Diwali uh, and uh, that's the reason July, August was, uh, was, was, was going to be slow. And in fact, September will be also less than last year. And that is very much uh, in line with what we had thought. So uh, all of us are expecting a bumper festive season in tractor. Uh, but uh, this quarter, which is uh, different, cannot compare like to like from last year quarter, okay. uh, will be slow. Okay, so expecting a bumper festive season. I would admit, season, however, that... Yeah, uh, yeah. I, Go ahead, sir. I would admit that uh, some of the sort of flood and all have had some temporary blip in, in certain areas. But as an overall industry, I don't think it's going to make a huge difference. Okay, and you are expecting a strong festive season, but September also, uh, you don't expect strong tractor sales to come in. Let me then ask you, sir, in terms of whether there is any possibility, any headroom, any levers that you can exercise to eke out better margins on the tractor business, which you've been able to successfully do. <clears throat> well, as I, as I had said before, that uh, margin growth will depend on input cost and will depend on the volume growth. Uh, the input costs are going up. Uh, the commodity prices have gone up uh, uh, quite quite significantly in the first six months. Mm. Uh, and they'll continue to go up uh, in the last three months also. Uh, but at the same time, with the volumes going up, uh, we do have an opportunity for spreading a fixed cost on a larger volume. And therefore, uh, I think most of us will certainly try and maintain our margins uh, and even try and increase a little bit but it's very difficult to say till after and the festive season is over okay you're saying that commodity costs are imposing some pressure on margins uh, uh, do you anticipate that if we see this current run rate as far as crude continuing and also the rupee depreciation uh, this is going to start to eat into margins not much for tractors uh, because uh, tractors overall. Uh, do not have a very no, high overall, not just for the tractor business content. but overall uh, overall, overall Overall, for automotive, uh, uh, I think there is also a balancing factor for most of us because uh, the import cost going up because of uh, exchange rate does get compensated somewhat uh, with the export uh, revenue going up again because of the exchange rate. So there is a natural hedge that most of us have uh, against the foreign exchange. Uh, and the foreign exchange by itself should not make much of a difference in terms of overall margin because of natural hedge. Uh, where the difference will come is if the foreign exchange artificially increases the commodity price of what we buy in India yeah. and then of course it makes a difference because that it's spread over the full volume. Uh, now most of us have been able to pass on <clears throat> till now I would say about half of commodity price increase in the selling mm. price mm. and about half is, uh, is sort of balanced because of the growing volume uh, okay. that we have in, even on the automotive side but do you, uh, and therefore the margins have been reasonably well but maintained. But do you feel that you might be compelled to pass on more? You said that you've been able to pass on half of the commodity uh, uh, costs onto consumers. Do you feel that you will need to take price hikes now? Well, uh, this, this is a dynamic situation, and I don't think it's a situation of cost goes up, so price goes up. Uh, it's a situation of what the market will bear, what the competition is doing, uh, and many other factors. Uh, and, and therefore, sometimes we are not able to pass on the full commodity price increase. Sometimes we may even pass on and compensate for past deficit mm. that we may have on the mm. commodity price increase. Okay, so, so again, it's very difficult to say sorry, exactly what will happen, but clearly we try very hard to maintain our margin and look at all uh, avenues that we have. So uh, no, to ensure imme that no we immediate price hike is, is what I should uh, then anticipate? I cannot really say that because the yeah. price hike again depends on a lot of different things. Uh, sure. And I think the last one that we had taken was on 1st of July. 
Uh, normally, we will wait about three months before taking, a, taking another price increase. But okay. again, this is not a very fixed schedule. It can happen a little sooner or a little later. So I cannot say okay. no price increase. But uh, so but, you're uh, keeping you're yeah. keeping the window open for the possibility of a price increase as well. Let me then talk to you about your new Absolutely. launch, sir, the MPV Marazzo. Uh, uh, if I were to ask you for the kind of run rate that you expect with the Marazzo, I'm taking a look at the Ortega numbers, the Innova numbers, which do about five thousand six and a half thousand units per month. What is the kind of expect run rate that you are working with for the Marazzo? Well, Marazzo, first of all, the launch has gone very well. Uh, the initial reaction is very good. Uh, we are preparing overall capacity, overall capacity for Marazzo and S201 that will be launched uh, in a few months uh, to be about eight to 9,000 vehicles per month uh, together. Uh, now, whether we sell more Mirage or more S201, uh, we are really not focusing on that too much uh, because we have kept our capacity flexible. Uh, so <clears throat> let's assume half and half or there about 60, 40, half and half of 8, 9,000. Okay, uh, so eight, nine thousand between the two. Uh, uh, that's the Marazzo as well as the urban SUV that you plan to launch. But uh, what's the strategy going to be, uh, Mr. Goenka, as far as the Marazzo is concerned? Are you looking at pushing this more towards fleet users, personal consumption? Uh, what's the strategy for the Marazzo specifically? No, we have tried very hard to ensure that this is not seen just as a fleet vehicle. Of course, it is a fleet vehicle also. Uh, it is designed to carry people, uh, uh, but, but we are also focusing on families, large families, uh, to, to do a vehicle that is very, very comfortable, spacious, uh, premium in, internal luxury, um, pre premium internals. Uh, we have tried to do that, so that's for family. We are also focusing on uh, families enjoying outside life or sort of weekend trips uh, yeah. uh, and so on. So I don't think that our volume will come only uh, from fleet operation. Fleet operation will be one of the three verticals mm. that we expect the volume from. Okay. Let me uh, talk to you about uh, what is going on as far as the JB with Ford is concerned. So you're revisiting the past uh, as you look into the future. What is the game plan now as far as the Ford m and JV is concerned? Have you worked out the details? Uh, and why, people ask the question again, are you interested in inking this joint venture with Ford where the business perhaps this year has seen a decent performance, but otherwise, uh, you know, it's seen a 1% growth in sales in India and the domestic operations in 2017 it continues to be a loss-making business what is Ford bringing to the table for you well uh, the Ford JV is a speculation and I don't know where to start it so from. is it happening uh, or not we happening about uh, <clears throat> we have, what we have talked about is an alliance between Ford and Mahindra and that alliance is very much in place everything that we are doing right now we have announced it in the media there's nothing new to talk about. Uh, we have an alliance on product development. We have an alliance on sourcing. We have an alliance on international uh, operations where Ford might be able to help Mahindra a little more. Uh, we have an alliance uh, for, uh, for doing even uh, uh, hel helping Ford in terms of the network expansion in India. <clears throat> so those are the kind of things that we are doing. Uh, and there is nothing further to talk about beyond that. So alliance. there is no JV that you are inking with Ford. That's, you're categorically ruling that out. All the alliances that we have talked about are basically cooperation between the two companies. It is not a JV. It is not a JV. Okay, let me then ask you about what else uh, is being speculated or reported on, sir. And, uh, and the assumption is that uh, since Ford's global strategy is now moving towards SUVs as opposed to sedans, that you will collaborate on mid-sized uh, and compact SUVs as well as perhaps electric vehicles. Is that the plan? That we have announced. Uh, we have already announced that, uh, that uh, Ford is likely to uh, use one of the Mahindra platforms that we are currently developing. And Mahindra could be using a Ford platform for electric vehicles uh, that uh, Ford already has, an uh, 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 IC engine platform that we may convert to electric vehicles. So this, these have been announced. Mm -hmm. And all of these are right now MOUs, meaning, let, uh, meaning intentions or intent. Okay. Uh, we have not yet signed the final agreement to do it, and that depends on many other factors. That depends on whether the business case commercially is viable, uh, whether there is capacity available, uh, and, and all of those things. So that work is going on. So there are five areas that we have already announced uh, that we are collaborating on. One is a mid-size SUV platform. 
वन इज इलेक्ट्रिक व्हीकल यूजिंग फोर्ड प्लेटफॉर्म वन इज फोर्ड यूजिंग महिंद्राज इंजन वन इज ऑन मोबिलिटी एंड वन इज ऑन कनेक्टिविटी सो यू सर दिस इज स्टिल एट द लेवल ऑफ एन एम ओ यू वेन यू होप टू टेक दिस टू क्लोजर वेन यू होप टू इंक दिस फाइनल अग्रीमेंट यू ऑल्सो सर दर आर सेवल अदर डिटर्मिंग फैक्टर्स दैट यूर करेंटली वेइंग ऑन स्पेशली वेन इट कम्स टू कमर्शियल वायबिलिटी वेन यू होप टू क्लोज दिस I think two of these five are very close to getting closed. Uh, so uh, within the next month or so, we should be able to announce two of these five. Within a month, you'll be able to announce Don't two of these. Don't ask me which two. I am going to ask you, sir. Of course, I'm going to ask you which two. <laughs> <laughs> no, so I, I cannot tell you that right now. Okay, but uh, within a month, you will announce uh, uh, at least two of these MOUs that uh, that will move towards closure with uh, with Ford. Uh, let me ask you then, sir, about the plan as far as uh, EVs are concerned. Uh, you're here for the Mobility Summit as well. There's confusion now on whether Fame 2 will be announced at the summit or not. Uh, but uh, what's your own sense of what the policy is likely to take forward? We've heard from government saying that they intend to put in place a consistent. predictable and stable policy perhaps a five year policy what are you hearing well whatever i have heard uh, is very positive uh, what i have heard first of all that it's a five year policy not a one year or two year policy that's very important because the development cycles are long uh, and the industry needs to know that the policy will not change in the next year two years so that's very positive but i've also heard a total outlay of 5 and a half thousand crores these are not official information this actually i'm reading it in the media 5 and 1/2000 crores which is a good sum of money to put behind it uh, what i have also heard is uh, significant thrust on uh, charging infrastructure again that's the the need that we have of having that structure and what i've also heard is that all vehicles two wheelers three wheelers four wheelers and buses are being supported which is also uh, good news good news to have so therefore if what i have heard turns out of the policy hmm. uh, i think uh, it's very positive for ramp up of electric vehicles in india okay uh, you know uh, um, my conversations with the ceo of niti ayog amitabh kant uh, this is what i got from him his uh, uh, message to industry was that look uh, we need to focus on two wheelers and three wheelers 76% of india's mobility market is in that space and when it comes to subsidizing four wheelers it will have to be shared and connected four wheelers that the government will have to look at subsidizing given that what would your concern be well that's my understanding also <clears throat> that uh, except for two wheelers the support that is coming is primarily for commercial use of electric vehicles uh, and i'm quite okay with that uh, of course it's nice to have all vehicles uh, supported but i think if you have to prioritize and say where should the revenue or where should the tax payers money go i think uh, to support commercial application of four wheelers uh, is perhaps a higher priority and in a sense it also gives a higher payback uh, because uh, when you have commercial application then you drive more uh, every day uh, the vehicle and therefore the payback of how much uh, you uh, help in reducing pollution how much you help in reducing oil import uh, yeah. is certainly favors favoring a commercial application so i have i have no qualms with that if that's how it comes out Uh, but what is the prognosis and the outlook sir there's been so much talk around electric vehicles the transition and now clearly it seems like the government uh, understands the sensitivities or at least is in no mood to sort of force uh, the transition to electric vehicles we're doing about what a thousand electric vehicles a year you talk about a 30% penetration by 2030 i mean is that a realistic target well uh, i think it's a matter of taking off <clears throat> and we are still not at a point of take off the take off requires two things to happen the first is the charging infrastructure and i'm hoping that after farm a2 is in place uh, the charging infrastructure will start uh, coming up at least in 6 7 8 key cities that is number one number two is uh, commercial viability for the user of electric vehicles so if we expect that electric vehicles will ramp up because people will pay for clean vehicles that won't happen Uh, the only way to ramp up is if it is commercially more viable for a fleet operator for an aggregator for a shared mobility service provider and i think we are not very far from that my calculation is that we perhaps need to improve the overall cost of running electric vehicle uh, by about 5000 rupees per month 
uh, and, uh, and, and with a little bit more reduction in price, say about 10% coming from OEMs, with the Farm Aid scheme continuing, with the states uh, uh, facilitating uh, some of these things, registration tax not happening, with electricity rate uh, being somewhat a preferred rate, as some states are doing, I think we are just about there. Uh, so my estimate is that in a year from now, uh, we should be at a commercial break even, and then we should see a fast ramp up. I think 30% by 2013 is, doab 2030 is doable, uh, but it won't happen by itself. Uh, right. Everybody has to work for it, but mm. it's doable. Okay, you're saying you expect a commercial break even hopefully next year. But, you know, uh, since we're talking about uh, uh, the de uh, demand push really coming in from the government, sir, and Tata Motors and M&M uh, were the winners of the bid that EESL had put out. Now, it seems very clear that there seem to be issues on the procurement aspect, not so much on the delivery aspect, but on the procurement front. What are your concerns there? Well, uh, we have completed phase one, uh, which was 150 vehicles for Mahindra. Uh, and the phase two, uh, the letter of, letter of intent has come to us already and we are just in the final phases of finalizing uh, the phase two contract and as soon as that happens, we are ready uh, with uh, about 500 vehicles per month that we can supply. And what I have been told by ESL is that they, have, they are ready with orders uh, coming from various states uh, uh, and as soon as we just do the final uh, agreement on the commercial terms, we'll be able to start supplies. Okay. Uh, when do you expect... So it's, it's a matter of weeks. It's a matter of weeks. A matter of weeks before they start to procure under phase two? That is correct. Okay. And uh, so the total outlay under phase two will be how much, sir? Well, for us, it's about 4,800 4, vehicles. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's uh, roughly about 10 lakh plus each vehicle so you can do a quick math i don't know what that comes to 400 crores something like that okay 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 uh, uh, very quickly mr May, uh, goenka before i let you go let me also ask uh, uh, you a quick word as far as the two wheeler business is concerned what is the plan sir i mean that's not something that you very often speak of uh, it isn't again a business that uh, uh, really has moved in a direction that you would like it to what's the plan now as far as the two wheeler space is concerned well, uh, uh, what we had announced about a year and a half ago as a strategy going forward for two-wheeler is what we are putting in place. Nothing has changed from that plan. We are uh, kind of on a maintenance mode in uh, commuter, commuter scooters and bikes that we had uh, come out with earlier, and we are selling those in small quantities, and that will continue. But a primary thrust is on uh, what we are calling CLPL, a separate company that we have established uh, for bringing out uh, Java uh, bikes. Uh, and we expect to launch our first Java bike uh, before the end of this year. Uh, and uh, the other, other focus that we have is in PMTC, uh, the, the Puzo Motor uh, uh, motorcycles, right. uh, which is actually scooter, the name is confusing, uh, and, and, and we have uh, really revamped uh, the investment in that, in that company, mm. and we have a fairly aggressive strategy to, to turn around that uh, PMTC company also. So our primary thrust is on PMTC and on CLPL. Okay. Uh, any possibility or any plans uh, for a tie-up with a global automaker, sir? Uh, a lot of your peers have done that, uh, TVS with BMW, for instance. Are you looking at the possibility of tying up with a global player? Uh, Harley-Davidson is looking at, uh, at lower CC engines. Uh, could that at all be on the cards, uh, a global tie-up? You're showing in terms of, in terms of, in terms of two-wheelers? Yes, sir. Are you saying for two wheel? No, no. We are not looking at any tie-up. Uh, we have uh, PMTC and we have uh, CLPL, which is a joint venture, uh, and uh, not a joint venture, but a, but a company which has uh, uh, shareholders outside Mahindra and Mahindra. Uh, so right now we have nothing on the cards, but that never means that uh, it can never happen. Okay, I'll end then by asking you about... Always keep the window open. Always, always keep the window always open. Always keep the window open. Uh, are you keeping the window open for a, a manufacturing alliance, a joint venture, or perhaps an acquisition? No, uh, what I said is right now nothing is on the cards. Mm, okay, all right. On any of these. Okay. And window is open for everything. All right, sir. Let me then ask you about uh, where you see market share, sir. If I were to take a look at the market share in the UV segment, uh, down to about 25% from 50% uh, four years ago, where are you hoping to take market share? What do you anticipate as being the key levers to drive market share? And also, again, uh, you know, just a broad sense of uh, volume expectation over the next five to ten years. Uh, your automotive volumes at a CAGR of 11.2 percent, uh, tractor volumes 11.4 percent. Uh, can these growth rates be significantly surpassed in the next few years? Well, you have a better uh, calculation of CAGR than I do. So thank you for letting me know those numbers. Um, 
So, uh, market share story, I think we have beaten to death now. Uh, and uh, I would only be repeating what I have said many times, uh, that given how SUV segment or UV segment has expanded, uh, while we have kept our volume growth at a good pace, uh, clearly with all the players coming in and clearly this industry growing at 25-30% uh, or higher, uh, it was not possible for us to, to maintain a market share. Uh, we have new launches, uh, uh, the Marazzo launch, the S201 launch. With that, we do expect to gain volume. Uh, significantly, uh, but whether uh, how much that will change market share, that depends on what happens in the industry. So focus, uh, frankly, is not so much on market share. Focus is more on growing our volume, having a hit product. Uh, that's what we expect to do from Marazzo. Uh, as far as CAGR growth is concerned, I think 11% CAGR growth is pretty good. Uh, if we maintain 11% CAGR growth uh, over a longest period of 8 to 10 years, uh, I don't think we should be complaining. Uh, well, there will be years when we will have a dip. There will be years when we will do better than 11%, but overall, if we average out 11 percent, uh, mm. I'll be very happy. So you're saying focus is on volume growth and not necessarily gaining market share. Then let me ask you, sir, uh, on the back of the launches that you have uh, already announced and the visibility that you have with your uh, new pipeline, what is the volume growth guidance? Because you had also said that you'd look at uh, what you were clocking in August and September to see if you need to revise upwards your volume guidance. Uh, do you feel confident of being able to do that? Uh, not right now for the industry. Uh, not right now for the industry because, as you know, August month has been bit of a uh, bit of a volume degrowth for the mm. industry, about two two and a half percent. Mm. Uh, and I, as I said at that time, that I would wait till end of September uh, mm. before I we, we take a fresh call mm. on whether the industry growth will be higher than what we had said. There's no reason to reduce our guidance, which was about 10, 11 percent. So there's no reason to reduce it. But right now, I'm not in a position to increase the guidance. As far as Mahindra is concerned, uh, on the back of two launches that we are doing, uh, the, the Marazzo now and the S201, of course, we are the third one in G4 Extend. Mm. Uh, we do expect to get from these three products eight to 9,000 volume per month. Uh, however, not all of it will be fresh volume. Some of it will be cannibalization. Okay. Not too much. So I cannot tell you the total volume increase, but from these products, we'll get eight to 9,000 is what we're expecting. Okay, eight to 9,000 from the new launches. But uh, uh, at this point in time, uh, you're not bringing down your volume guidance, but you're not revising it upwards either. That is correct. All right, Mr. Goenka, always a pleasure, sir. Appreciate you joining us here on CNBC TV 18. Thanks very much for your time.